Assalamu alaikum everybody. Honorable former Vice President of India, Mani Shankar Ayer Sahib and esteemed panelists. Zia Sahib, it's been quite a journey, I must say, from Til Talaq Do, Do Us Apart to this book of saffron flags and skull caps. I think the image of the book, I've seen it many times in Varanasi, very distinct. Uh, it's, it's very stark at the same time. But you know, the title of the book perhaps gives me hope than nihilism that we are seeing around us. It says of saffron flags and skull caps, it's not about tika, tilak versus skill, skull caps, or say saffron flag versus green flags. So I think that is what gives us hope and uh, this is what, on that note, and that is the way I have read this book. For me, this book is also about what um, Zia Sahab has actually said in the context of uh, uh, while he is quoting Maulana Ashraf Ali Thanvi uh, about his, uh, you know, very famously read a series of magazines called Bihashti Zevar. I've read it while I was growing up in Patna. And uh, it advises that women should not be taught to write. Well, the first word in Quran is Ikra, Padhu. And uh, while I was growing up, I was told by my father, who was uh, uh, a lawyer and a politician as well. So he used to say that basically, when the word in the Quran is called Ikra, it means that if you have to go to China, because in the time of China, the significance was that you are very, very far, it's very, very far. So if you have to go there, if you have to go there, you can go there. And it's coming on a day, this debate or this entire conversation is coming on a day that All India Muslim Personal Law Board has just said that they are thinking of having Sharia courts. I'm debating that on my show tonight. And the more I read this book, the more I understand that how it is important for people like Zia to talk about what Quran says about women and their rights, about their understanding of what the first Muslim woman was, what prophets' wives were about and what they believed in and what is being depicted as an understanding of Islam and Quran which is completely in contrast to what Quran believes in. So why is it important that we are debating the othering of a Muslim? Why is it that the Muslim community again and again, particularly those who are believed to be custodians of Islam, such as All India Muslim Personal Law Board, who has taken out it on itself that they would appear as one, talking about Sharia quotes today? When we say that othering of Muslim, I'm just thinking about it again and again, how much of that the Muslim community itself has contributed into. The reason why I'm saying so, and uh, again, I am completely opposed to the idea of being nihilistic. Again, I'll go to the title of the book, which gives me hope more than going away from that, you know, the entire depiction of identity being about tilak or skull cap. It's not about that or burqa. It's not about that anymore. I think it's about also understanding that how ground is also shifting away. When 18% Muslims of Uttar Pradesh, for example, which, uh, you know, are declared, that community is declared unwinnable. When 30% Muslims who form a very important part of uh, the discourse in Assam do not matter. When a significant percentage of Muslims do not matter in every state where they can make a difference, particularly with their voices and their opinion, then it is about the community also to think within. And that's what I am saying, and that's the way I look at this book. That when they talk about skull caps, it's about assertion of an identity, and I believe it's very important to assert your identity. It's not about the time, it's not about the last four years, it's about just saying that yes, I'm a Muslim in India, and I believe that I'm a Muslim in India. And there's nothing wrong if I wear a skull cap, or I wear a burqa, or I, I, I wear anything. You know, so I, I'm just looking at it from that point of view, and Zia Saab's book actually does a macro analysis and a micro analysis of how situation is changing and how it is drifting. So when he talks about akhlaq, he says that, you know, 52-year-old akhlaq, father of an Indian Air Force personnel, is suspected of killing a calf and storing beef in his fridge at his residence in Dadri. And then he talks about how the entire event unfolded I'm just trying to understand one thing, that why is it becoming that uh, today 
any action or any incident that is involving Muslims of this nature, lynching or other incidents, almost invariably makes members of this community look as anti-social or anti-law, that they are against the law. Isn't that something that the community should be worried about? I'm not saying that they are doing something wrong, but I'm just saying that narrative of them being projected as against the law is again very, very worrying. And then that brings me to the question of what All India Muslim Personal Law Board has done today about Sharia courts. Imagine if members of other communities, what about Sikhs or, or Jains, if they start talking about their own courts, where will your own identity as minority minorities in this country go? So I'm, I'm saying that it's all right for us to be thinking about othering because uh, you know th there is a very good book that has also been written by my very good friend um, Nazia who has talked about mothering a Muslim in these current times but I'm also saying that how much of are we responsible for this othering and uh, that's why I'm summing it up by just saying that this title of the book gives me a lot of hope it's not about Tilak versus skull cap it's about one color of the flag and not versus the other. So it's about identity at the same time it gives us hope. Wear your identity on my sleeves. I've been wearing that and I think it's all right. Thank you.